I thought today I would start the first in what I'm planning hopefully to be a series of videos where I give you some book recommendations based on Taylor Swift songs and I'm going to do this era by era. Here's the thing, I don't have a book for every song because there are some songs that just don't work in the context of the books that I read and some of these are a little bit of a stretch but we're just gonna run with it, okay? So I thought we would start with the most recent era and that is the Tortured Poets Department. So let's go ahead and get into the recommendations. So first, for the song Fortnite featuring Post Malone, I chose The Cruel Prince by Holly Black because this, the like desperation, the like angst that is the song Fortnite is Cardin in June. Like, they are just the angstiest, most dramatic, like, romantic couple in a fantasy book that I have read in a while. Um, and I just really, really feel like that would work. The, um, the, the, especially the end of the song where, like, both Post and Taylor are singing at the same time. They're singing different lyrics, like, at varied, um times like that just feels so dramatic and it feels like it fits them perfectly so that is my recommendation for Fortnite. Next for the song The Tortured Poet Department, The Tortured Poets Department, the the titular album song, um, I chose Romancing Mr. Bridgerton by Julia Quinn. Now, I don't recommend a lot of books by Julia Quinn. Um, I don't love her writing. Um, I like the phenomenon she has brought us with the Bridgerton series. Um, there's just, there are a lot of flaws in the writing. I will admit to that. But I liked Romancing Mr. Bridgerton a lot more than I liked The Duke and I. That book is horrible, don't read it. But Penelope and Colin, I really, 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 really love as characters, more so in the show than in the books. But I think that this song fits for them specifically in their story because they are both writers and because they're also so dramatic. And like just the drama and the angst with them too, I feel like fits this song. Um, it's like it, it, it's so is like the relationship between two artists who are so dramatic about their art and about their lives and about everything and everything is life and death and this huge big thing. And I feel like that is very much Colin and Penelope. So I thought this one fit really well. And Torture Poets and um, uh, Bridgerton came out around the same time Torture Poets was in April. Bridgerton was in May, if I'm remembering right. And it just really felt like they fit together. It just felt like the right vibe. So that is my recommendation. Next, I chose um, Boyfriend Material by, who is that author? Alexis Hall for My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys. Um, the relationship, the couple in Boyfriend Material was just a tiny bit toxic sometimes, like the way that they interacted with each other. Um, and they, they learned from their mistakes, but definitely I could see this these lyrics resonating with these characters because they were both so desperate to find themselves, but they were focusing on the other that they didn't know how to find themselves first and they had to learn that the hard way um, that I think fits this song really well because they finally force themselves to like step outside of their own perceptions and all of that to really get to know one another. Um, and I feel like that just really fits this song. Now, for Down Bad, I chose Hunter by Rebecca Sharp. There are a lot of books that I, th I think would fit Down Bad, but I chose Hunter by Rebecca Sharp because this, um, really the whole series, um, the, the whole brother series fits really well um, for Down Bad because they, these brothers, they, the relationships, they are all down bad, I can tell you that. Um, and I just really, really love this series. It's such a fun read. Um, Hunter specifically uh, follows, I believe he's the oldest brother, let me double check. <laughs> But this is the second oldest brother, and I just feel like the way she writes her, like, alpha protective heroes just really fits for the down bad, bad vibe. Because they, like, even if they, it's like an enemies to lovers situation, 
they are so fierce and protective of the heroine in the story and I just felt like that really fit the vibe of Down Bad. So that is my recommendation. Next, for So Long London, this was another one that like there were a lot of books I could recommend, but then a lot of books that like I, I thought of, but it felt like a far stretch. But I ended up going with Akatar by Sarah J. Moss because I think specifically I was drawn to the line. Um, it's something like uh, my friends, like I shouldn't be terrified of uh, this relationship. And so I actually am connecting it more to Feyre and Tamlin than I am to Feyre and Reese. Um, and I just feel like she, I, in the, like, the, the lines, I'm just getting color back into my face. Um, it just feels very Feyre. And I feel like, in general, I think Feyre would really connect with Taylor Swift. But um, I think it would be a very good song like indicative of her journey not even just like the romance but like her journey of recovering from everything that happened in the spring court and moving forward and all of that so I went with So Long London and Akatar. Next but daddy I love him I chose Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams this was is probably my favorite contemporary romance of the year if not one of my favorite contemporary romances of all time sarah adams she is a real one i love her i adore her such a good book this is about a girl who is the middle or the youngest i think she's the youngest sister in a trio um and then she also has an older brother um and she's just always been thought of the good girl the young one the innocent one and she's just sick of it and she's like wants to do something to get out of the mold that she's been forced into. Um, so she starts going on practice dates with a bodyguard um, and that quickly turns into something else and she discovers who she can really be and who she is outside of everybody else's expectations. And I feel like that is exactly what But Daddy I Love Him is about. It's about having all these ideas and these expectations forced onto you but not wanting to conform to those and wanting to experience something else and I think it just worked out um, so perfectly that this series or that book specifically um, in this series like just works out so perfectly with the lyrics so that is my recommendation. For Guilty as Sin I am recommending The Good Girl's Guide to Rakes by who is that author? I'm blanking. I didn't write all the authors on the on my list. Eva Lee by Eva Lee. Um, this one is really fun, and I think the concept Guilty as Sin really plays into a historical romance, actually, because she is someone who's very much confined by society, and that's why she can't kind of like break out of her mold and discover more, um, because it's the 1800s and like she has no rights and all of this, and there's, you know, all these expectations from society of what a woman should do, um, and she wants to just experience more. She wants to be more, she wants to learn more, um, and that's why I think Guilty of Sin fits so well. Like, um, what if he's written mine on my upper thigh only in my mind just feels like the character in this book. She just wants, she has all these thoughts and these ideas and she wants to like branch out but is like forced to confined to society in a lot of ways so I think that song just really fits perfectly for this book and a lot of historical romances in general. So for the song, one of my favorite songs on the album, Who's Afraid of Little Old Me, I think there are probably dozens and dozens of books that I could have put here. There are so many that fit this fit this. The Crave series that I have, oh you can't, it's not in frame. The Crave series I have over here, that entire series fits like literally, literally so many series fit Who's Afraid of Little Old Me. But I ended up writing The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes because I saw so many um, edits of Rachel Zegler um, with that song from the movie and I'm like, you know what, that's right. Because Lucy Gray is such an interesting and complicated character and one that I didn't understand the first time I read the book. I've actually read the book once. I didn't understand her character until I saw the movie and then after I saw the movie I was like, that's it. I get it. I understand. And she is the embodiment of that. Like, she is what society 
her society, which is obviously, you know, Pan Am is a crazy society, um, even though we kind of live in it, but whatever, um, she is what they made her. And so I really, really, really love the vibes for um, this ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Like, I just think they fit so well with Who's Afraid of Little Old Me. Um, and I think it would just... It would just really, it, it plays so well into like the, the theatricalness of The Hunger Games too. So next, I can fix him. No, really, I can. I chose the Lore Olympus series, um, any of the volumes really. I mean, does Persephone not just give I can fix him? No, really, I can. Um, I just like, I feel like there's no further explanation needed. It's Persephone and Hades. That's kind of the whole idea of their story in the first place. Um, and I think it just works really well, to be honest. I think it, it just um, is this like push and pull. And I think it actually in Lore Olympus comes from both of them. It's not just like them. Um, it's not one sided. They're both thinking, well, maybe but it won't work. But well, maybe it will, but no, it won't. Like that kind of just push and pull, I think works really well in that series. And it's like the vibe I get from this song. Next, skipping to I Can Do It With A Broken Heart. I chose another Sarah Adams book because I am just such a big Sarah Adams fan. And I chose When In Rome. I love this book so much. I love Sarah Adams so much. Um, this is about actually a pop star a la Taylor Swift, um, who just kind of like Loki has a breakdown and she gets in her car and she's like, I'm gonna leave. And in inspired by the ha Audrey Hepburn movie where she goes to Rome to escape, but she doesn't, she's leaving her house with none of her stuff so she cannot get to Rome, Italy. Um, so she goes to Rome, Kentucky and her car breaks down and she's lost and doesn't know what she wants to do. Um, and this very lovely, nice guy comes out and he's like, you know, do you need something? And she's just, one, before she wants to make sure he's not a serial killer. Um, but two, um, she's so surprised he doesn't know who she is. And that is like such a relief to her and like so much less pressure um, that she stays there for a while and she takes a break and she kind of recoups and learns how to do it with a broken heart. And heals her heart. So I think that's the perfect song and um, the character herself like reminds me so much of like the idea of like a big pop star like that, like Taylor Swift. So I just think it works perfectly. So for The Smallest Man That Ever Lived, I put Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham, Bonham Young. Um, the thing is, I can't remember why I put that. I uh, don't actually remember the context of the book very well. I read this a little bit while a while ago and I made this list kind of a while ago. Um, I, I, did she have an ex? I think she had an abusive ex in that book and that was kind of what I was basing it off of. Um, or maybe he did? I can't remember. I can't remember. I'm gonna recommend it anyway. It's an incredible book. I loved it. Um, just can't remember the context of why I wrote it for the smallest man that ever lived. I think she had an abusive ex. Um, who knows though? Let's just move on. Next for The Alchemy, there is one book I could have put, I mean there's actually plenty I could have put here, but the most obvious for me was A Discovery of Witches um, by Deborah Harkness. I love A Discovery of Witches so much. If you have been on my channel at any point in the last like year, I talk about it all the time. I love this series so much. It is about a young witch, Diana Bishop. Um, she has not been a practicing witch for her whole life though, but she moves to Oxford to finish her doctorate, get a job there, whatever she does. Um, in she does research in alchemy, in the historical relevancy of alchemy. And so she um, pulls up this book out of the library, the Bodlin, 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 library in Oxford and it ends up being this super super important supernatural book called the Ashmole um, Manuscripts. I think it was Ashmole 78, seven, I don't remember the number, either way. Um, and that draws the attention of a lot of supernatural creatures, demons, vampires, witches. Um, and she's like, you know what, I'm not part of this, I don't want to be part of this, but the legacy of this book is that it, it holds the truth of creatures, where they came from, 
like how they came to be and potentially holds the key to why they're dying out. Um, so she gets caught up in all of this. She meets Matthew de Claremont, my love, my true love. Um, and they try to discover what's going on with the manuscript um, uh, and all of that and fall in love and meet lots of magical creatures, travel in time, all this. It is there, the line like, who are we to fight the alchemy? is Diana and Matthew. Like you can, like I would not be surprised if Taylor wrote that about Diana and Matthew specifically. Like it is perfect for them. It is their song. It's, I love it. I, it's genius. Next, Clara Bow. This is actually kind of just a recommendation, not to something super specific, but a character in general um, in a long series. And that is the Miles Morales Spider-Man comic books. Um, any of them, really. Just his his character in general. The you going from you look like Clara Bow to you look like Stephen X to you look like Taylor Swift. This legacy that, you know, it's a heavy legacy. It's a lot. It's overwhelming. Um, it's like it's hell to be heaven sent. That lyric too fits so perfectly because Miles has so much on his shoulders. He is carrying the legacy of being Spider-Man. He's carrying the legacy of Peter Parker um, in trying to be that great, you know, hero. Um, and I think it just fits with that song so, so well. Um, and again, I saw a lot of edits when this song came out of Miles in that song and they are depressing. So I think it's a good matchup recommendation. Skipping a couple more songs, moving on to The Albatross. I really love this song. It is just like the witchy vibes and um, just like this darkness to it, um, but also this flow. I love this song. And I am recommending Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. That series for this song is just perfect. They work together so well. Um, and I just really enjoy this series generally, um, but it just fits that vibe of like, it's like a, I don't know, it's just, you know, like, kind of like Willow, you know, it's just trying to get through um, this, like, treacherous path and assuming you're the problem. Um, and I f just think it fits really well. Um, the, the characters in this uh, face a lot um, at the fault of others and at the fault of their own. And so I just think the albatross really fits the like witchy dark vibes of this series. <sighs> Skipping another and moving on to the dogs are being crazy. <sighs> moving on to how did it end? I chose Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. This is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, I adore it. I love this book. And I chose this as a recommendation for how did it end because I don't know what it is about how did it end, but so clearly it fits like this idea of like an autopsy to me. And I don't even know, does she say that in the song or is it just like this thing that's stuck in my head? I'm not sure. But how did it end is like this dissection, an autopsy of a relationship of everything that happened. Um, and I think that would fit really, really well to Audrey Rose's um, reflection on her family life um, and trying to figure out how did it end? How did we get here? Why did this happen? Like, how do I move forward from this, um, from all the trauma that happens in that first book? I think it just fits really, really well. Um, and I'm just a huge fan of the series. Um, and this is probably, like, it might be my favorite song on the album. I don't know. I love them all. For So High School, I recommend Check In Mate by Ali Hazelwood. This one is a really cute book. It's a YA romance. It's a really cute YA romance. It's sweet. It's fun. Um, and I think it just captures that, like, feeling, like the So High School feeling um and I think she just made the characters so compelling and interesting and their dynamic so interesting of being partners and competitors and trying to find that balance um and I just think it it describes this series or the the book really well it fits with the song next I chose I hate it here uh, for I hate it here I chose a court of silver flames um because I hate it here but I um, I go to Secret Gardens in my mind is Nesta. Is Nesta. She, for a lot of the series, for a lot of this book, 
she's gone through so much and she does not know how to escape that. She does not know how to escape the trauma and the feelings that she had to go through um, at the hands of people that were out of her control. Um, and so she just chooses, she chooses to escape however she can. And so I think that's why it's the perfect song for her um, in her journey and like kind of finding peace in that in that escape. So very much recommend A Court of Silver Flames in that series in general. But I think that one fits the song really well. For I Look in People's win Windows, I wrote down Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston just because I feel like they, the relationship they develop in that book is them trying to find each other over the course of a lot of different events and like I feel like they're always missing each other and it takes them a long time to find to find balance with each other and I so I think that works really really well and I really love that song I think it's underrated for um, I'm gonna skip a couple because some of these I don't even remember why I wrote these down they don't make sense um, for the song Peter which was one of the hardest ones to find a recommendation for but I actually went with Heartstopper because I think that like caring relationship of like being together when you're young and trying to reconcile those experiences when you're older fit the character of, characters of Heartstopper so well even if we haven't necessarily seen them in those older stages in the comics I think that 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 reflection just fits so well with these characters um, and that they really would be there waiting for each other except I think Heartstopper has a happier ending than the song Peter. <laughs> Not my camera dying before the last song I have or like the last two I have written down but um, I do think Heartstopper has a happier ending than Peter because like my camera cut me off as I was saying that. Um, next I have Crescent City for the Bolter. There are a lot of characters that I think could fall into the Bolter um, as like an archetype, but I think Bryce in Crescent City, she's the one. She is like one of the top choices for the Bolter. Like that is her whole thing. I think she's always running away from her problems, always running away from her emotions, never letting anybody else in ever since all the stuff that happened. Um, which is understandable, but I also, like, I hope she grows. I still have to read the third one. Peaches. Do you not care about my recommendations? Um, but I think she... I, I haven't read the third one, so I hope she has room to grow. Um, but I definitely think she is always running. She's always trying to just be so independent to her detriment. Um, and so I think that song fits really well for her. Um, still love her though. Then lastly, actually, um, I have Turtles All the Way Down recommended for the song Robin. Robin is such a sweet, caring song. Um, I had a hard time picking a song for it or picking a book for it. Um, but then I reread Turtles All the Way Down this year um, uh, in anticipation of the movie coming out. And it is, um, a book about what like a girl who has to accept getting help from people um and when she needs it and i think that is a lot that like that soft caring and love that is put into the lyrics of the of the song robin i feel like just really fit well with that theme of um learning to accept help from other people and learning how to help yourself too um and learning how to like accept yourself and love yourself so i thought that was like a really good matchup so I hope you enjoyed all these recommendations. Um, if I ever think of recommendations for the songs that I skipped on Tortured Poets, maybe I'll do another video. There were just some that I could not think of any ideas. Um, so we'll see. But other than that, next time I will be seeing you for Midnight's. I think I'm just going to go in backwards order um, in hopes that I'm manifesting debutation somehow. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you read some of these books. Go listen to Tortured Poets, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.